Bismillah, 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 to everyone. I'm here joined with uh, Sheikh Dr. Abdul Rahim. He is uh, better known as uh, the author of the Medina books, the well known Medina books that many of us have benefited from and, uh, and is studied. Um, to have a more dense introduction or biography about the Sheikh, you guys can find it in, on, uh, on the internet. However, I'll give you guys a little summary. So he has, we could say that he has experience in the Arabic language for 50 years. He's been teaching for over 30 years. He's, uh, he's been the director of, uh, of uh, the Medina University as well. Of course, authored the books, many other books However, the ones that we all know are the Medina books. Um, uh, he's the, currently the director as well of, the, of uh, where they translate basically the, the Quran here in, uh, in Medina. King Fahd, uh, the organization of King Fahd where they translate the, the Masahif. And inshallah for you guys to know a little bit more about his his books and uh, and the things the things he has uh, accomplished and books he has authored, you guys can do a quick um, uh, quick search on on the internet uh, because the biography is uh, well known. So I'm honored, Ya Sheikh, وأشكركم كذلك على وقتكم وووجزاكم الله خير على على الجهد المبذول في في هذه اللغة الجميلة التي تتحفظ بها القرآن وفهم السنة. so so إن شاء الله أو أو let the Sheikh first of all if he if he wills to 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 perhaps introduce himself a little bit in terms of where you guys or where you studied. From the beginning of your your early age, how did it come about? Since you are originally from India, and India is well known that they don't speak uh, Arabic, how did originally the the perhaps the the intention of learning Arabic and how you learned Arabic uh, at, at you know growing up? بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد I'm very glad to be this morning with brother Muhammad Al-Andalusi who has been engaged in teaching Arabic with regard to my interest in Arabic and my learning Arabic of course in India we have two types of educational system one is the regular educational system where every subject, all the subjects are taught in English and there is no place for Arabic. At the, Islam, at the university level, you, you can choose one of the subjects, one of the languages, and that can be Arabic. But that is very little. Uh, the other system of education is the uh, what we call madrasa system. <coughs> we have uh, lots of madrasas in different parts of India where they teach uh, Arabic and Islamic sciences. And uh, it is a completely a different system. Uh, usually they teach Arabic grammar from the classical texts and uh, the main 
purpose of their learning Arabic is to understand the glorious Quran and the Hadith. And they, don't, they are not very conversant with Arabic. <clears throat> Probably nowadays there is a change in the system, but earlier they only studied grammar from the very beginning, very detailed study of grammar. I was uh, associated with the regular system. Okay. The regular system. I continue? Yes. Yeah, mm. And so I had no chance to study Arabic. <clears throat> but I was interested and they were of course books available in English. I studied, of course, English. Uh, so I studied Arabic for, uh, through these books and it was, alhamdulillah, I was, I was able to learn the language. And later on, whenever there were Arab uh, scholars coming to India, all that I used to get in touch with them and try to speak Arabic with them. Mm -hmm. That is how I developed Arabic uh, speech and all that. Later on, I studied at the world famous Azhar University. Mm -hmm. In Egypt? Yeah? Egypt, yes. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. That was in 1964. Uh, I studied and the Faculty of Arabic Language. And uh, fortunately for us, our Dean of the Faculty was the very famous uh, Sheikh Abdul Hamid, uh, Mahidin Abdul Hamid, who has edited lots and lots of uh, grammar texts. Very famous scholar. He was our dean for some time. So I had to do first of all. I had done English on English MA in the University of Madras. So I was allowed to do MPhil at the Azhar University in Arabic. I did MPhil and later on I I did. Uh, PhD. Okay. So masters and then PhD. Yes. Okay. They said PhD. You can't directly do PhD. Okay. You have to do MA. It's called MPhil there. So I did both this, and uh, my of course there is a thesis also, both in uh, MPhil and PhD. The MPhil <coughs> thesis was uh, Arabic word, Persian words in Arabic. Uh, unfortunately, that um, book has not been published. Uh, in the PhD course, my thesis was uh, the academic uh, editing of the famous Al Mu'arrab Lil Jawaliqi. It's a very famous book dealing with uh, foreign words in Arabic. Al Mu'arrab Lil Jawaliqi. So I edited this book and uh, <coughs> he mentions words, you know, this is Greek, this is Persian, this is Indian. But he doesn't give, a, give details of this information. Mm -hmm. So I had to, <clears throat> um, part of my work was to, uh, to give the original word in these languages, in Greek or mm -hmm. Hebrew or Aramaic. Most of these words from these languages. That has been published by 
a Syrian publisher. Mm. It's out of stock now, but long back mm. it was published. So what is the name of the, of the thesis you, you wrote? My, the thesis was uh, Foreign Wars in Arabic. Foreign Wars in Arabic. Yeah. With, uh, with the editing of al marab al Jawadir. The main work was to edit the book. And there was a very thorough introduction about foreign wars and how they were treated by the Arabs when they took it, took them in their language. And the languages from which the Arabs took. So that was a uh, introduction to the study. The Sheikh, the scholar, is is more as Jawaliqi. Jawaliqi. Al Jawaliqi. Uh, Al Jawaliqi is a <coughs> fifth century scholar. Al Jawaliqi. So after your PhD. You know, yeah, after the PhD, there was a in those days, nineteen sixty-six. There was a new university established in, in Sudan, Umdurman. It was called the Islamic University of Umdurman, Jamaat Umdurman al Islamiyah. So they, it was a completely new university and they didn't have faculty members, so they took all the faculty members from Egypt. At the time I was in Egypt. So I also applied. They wanted a teacher of English, but uh, teaching, uh, teaching English through Arabic. So I was, uh, I was taken to teach English through Arabic. And I worked there for three years from 66 to 69. In 69, I had applied to the Islamic University of Medina. At the time, the president of the university was Sheikh Ibn Baz Allah Rahmo. Yes. So I wrote a letter to him asking if I can come and teach Arabic to the foreign students, non-Arab students who joined the university. And he sent me a letter of acceptance. And so in 1966, I joined the Islamic University. So my work at the university at that time was teaching the students. They were, they were, there was no uh, system of teaching. At that time, there was a sheikh from Syria, Muhammad, Ahmad al Ahmad. His name was Ahmad al Ahmad. He taught only students who had a little bit of Arabic with them and they could understand his language. So there were a lot of students who had no teacher and they were just sitting there doing nothing because there was no teacher and they didn't find a teacher who could teach them in Arabic through English or through the languages. So when I applied, the Sheikh immediately accepted me and he began to teach these students. Of course, there were different levels. There were students who did not know how to write. They did not know the letters. I taught them the letters. There were some who had a little bit of knowledge of Arabic. So I had different uh, sections. I taught them. And then the, I was, uh, began to write this book, the mm -hmm. Rusul Arabiya, to teach these students. Mm -hmm. How long did it take you to? Put it the was about <clears throat> five, six years. Every day I used to write the lesson. And then, uh, with the help of the cyclostyling, 
in those days, you know, they were. So we used to make co copies of this uh, lesson. So every day I wrote a lesson, every day I wrote a lesson. And that is how it took about five, six years to complete the book, three parts. And then the university authorities, they invited me one day and they said, uh, we get <coughs> lots of uh, queries, inquiries about a book that you teach mm. and uh, we would like to have it published. Mm. I said, yes, I have you know, manuscript. I'm teaching this book. And uh, yes. Uh, so they said, okay. So they uh, first published the first book, first part. And the, the, of course we used it in the school, the, the Arabic uh, uh, program. Mm -hmm. And they also sent it to other countries where Arabic is taught. Second part later on and third part, all these three parts were published. And that is how the book <coughs> became uh, used first of all in the in our program Arabic program let on outside the program and then many of the students who learned from this program they wanted to have the book published in their countries so they asked me it was my copyright I was owned by owned by me uh, so I gave them permission to Publish in their countries without any monetary uh, equal. Yeah, so they published it in their countries. The first, I think, was published by in, in, in Russia. I was a student, Russian student, uh, and later on in India, also it was published, and other countries also. So that is how the book spread and later on I wrote <coughs> uh, a key in English mm -hmm. uh, to, to introduce the subjects that I teach in each lesson. Mm -hmm. So I said the, the purpose of this, of this lesson is to teach such and such thing. Mm -hmm. Kind of like rules for the teacher. Yes. Uh, no, there was a separate book for teachers. Okay. Teacher's book. But uh, the key was grammatical analysis of the lessons. Okay. Yeah. And a uh, key and then teacher's book and then uh, uh, tamarin, answers to the okay. exercises. They were also published. And then I wrote a book called Glossary of Words Used in the Book, mm. with English translation, that was also published. So, so the glossary was the Arabic words that were a little complicated, translated to English? Yes, the, all the words that were book in, uh, used in my book, Okay. on the, uh, the three parts, mm -hmm. all the words used in the book, I have mentioned them uh, alphabetically. Okay and uh, translated them into English and with some grammatical notes also. For example, if it is a word is Mamnur Manasar, I wrote this, mm. yes. I pointed out that this word is Mamnur Manasar. Uh, if it is a plural, for example, Buyut, I said it is on the measure of for rule, like that. Later on, in uh, in Canada, there was a brother by name Asif Mahar Ali. Asif Mahar Ali. He was an Indian of Pakistani origin, but he had settled down in Canada. And in Toronto, okay. yeah. Once he visited me, 
during the month of Ramadan, before the breakfast, I got a telephone call. I, he, the man, I did not know him. He said, I am in the bus, st bus stop and I'd like to see you because after the Maghrib prayer, I have to go back to Mecca. I have no time. I came with a group of students from from Jordan, Jordan University. And uh, I took some time to come to Medina or, uh, or a number or two and I have to go back up immediately after the Maghrib prayer. I want to see you just now. So I sent a car and he came and he said, I was interested in learning Arabic. I tried. Later on, <clears throat> I was told that the Jordan University offers a course. So I went to Jordan. When I went to Jordan, they were teaching the book prepared by Ummul Qura University. The book, <clears throat> he said, is very, very difficult. And in the class, there are students who want to learn Arabic for purpose of business or uh, Christian missionaries who want to use it for converting Muslims. And the book uh, doesn't help us. It's very difficult. One of the students had a book. Uh, he said it's very useful. I took it from him and then uh, photocopied the book. It was by one uh, V. Abdul Rahim. So I went to the Imam of the mosque where I was staying and uh, I told him I want to learn from you. He was a teacher of Arabic. He knew English. He was a Palestinian. And he was the Imam of the mosque also. He said, okay, so you give me the books, I'll find out. So I gave him, he says, both the books. The, the book that is being used the, at the university, the book which I found from the, the student. He took the books, second day he came and he said, I have, I have read the books. The university book has been in a prepared by about 10 scholars of Arabic of very high standing. But unfortunately, they don't know how to teach Arabic to non-Arabs. The other book, which is written by one single man, he knows how to teach Arabic to non-Arabs. I will teach you that book. Mm. So he taught him all the three books, all the three parts. And uh, later on he, he, he was not <clears throat> actually, you know, attending the classes because, uh, but he had to pay the fees and all that because he could not stay there without being a student. So he was a student, but he was learning at the Imam's uh, house. Yeah. Later on, he went back. When he went back, he started teaching Arabic in a mosque. Went back to Pakistan? No, no, to Canada. Oh, okay. Toronto, yes. Yeah. And it took, all the, the whole course took two years. And at uh, the end of the course, he invited me to the convocation. I went there, and then I told him, as I told him the congregation, that uh, I uh, think that very short, shortly, can, uh, Toronto will become the Mecca of Arabic learning in North America. Mm -hmm. And it has become so. Mm -hmm. Now in every mosque there is a class 
and uh, yes, uh, in send Islamic centers and mosques and all. A lot of people are teaching Arabic and using the book. <coughs> so it is actually it has become the center of Arabic learning in North America. Uh, so I have given you the. history of how I learned Arabic and how I started teaching in Islamic University of Medina and uh, in Toronto. Toronto I have been there for several times and uh, many of my lectures on grammar were prepared there. Okay. What was your longest stay in Toronto? About two months, okay. yeah, because uh, the, the, when I have holidays, the university is to go. Mm. How do you find the, the weather there? Weather, I was not in the okay. in, in, in winter. Winter would be very difficult. Okay. It was usually summer, and no problem. being recorded yes <clears throat> so in terms of in terms of uh, when they first the the problem that I have and something that I always call and emphasize a lot on is that many students well I actually see many institutions many different books many teachers they just start very heavily with the students trying to make them understand grammar, Arabic grammar. Especially something that I see a lot is trying to make them understand Arabic grammar in English. Mm -hmm. So, first of all, what do you think about this approach as, as a, an expert in uh, epitomology? Is that how you pronounce it? Epitomology in languages, in foreign languages. Um, how do you see that being effective or not effective when teaching any language, starting with grammar instead of uh, whatever else should be started with? Mm. You see, languages are not taught with the help of grammar. Uh, only dead languages are taught with the help of grammar, like Latin, like Hebrew, in those days, but Hebrew has become a living language now. But Syriac, Sanskrit, these languages, they are not spoken, you know, and uh, <clears throat> especially Latin. So they teach only grammar. But living languages like Arabic and like, like Spanish and all that, they are taught with, with uh, what we call applied grammar. You select a particular subject, the the easiest part of the language and you teach them without giving the grammar but behind the sentences that you use there is grammatical coherence uh, the teacher knows it and uh, the man who wrote the book also yes he has of course uh, the idea behind these sentences uh, so that is how it is taught. Uh, you see, in languages, you ask people, "What do you, what language are you learning?" He says, "I'm, I'm learning Spanish. I'm learning French. I'm learning Russian." But if we ask a man who is learning uh, Arabic, he doesn't say, "I'm learning Arabic." He says, "I'm learning Arabic grammar." There's a mindset, a mindset which is wrong. You start from the beginning, you say Islam, Arabic has got two, has got three parts of speech. Uh, they start with, uh, you know, details of these parts of speech and all that. Not a sentence, not one sentence is being taught. Living language of Arabic, they don't teach. They only teach grammar. So that is a very wrong approach, the wrong uh, uh, mindset. 
uh, what we teach, the moment you teach Arabic <coughs> sentences, هذا كتاب هذا قلم كذا, the students, you know, feels that he's learning something. He's learning a new language, and that gives him impetus to to learn more. But uh, uh, our brother Meher Ali was teaching in Toronto. His famous saying is, we teach Arabic with, uh, with smiling faces. <laughs> Not with long faces, you know, yeah. sitting and thinking about. Yeah. So that is how it should be taught. And uh, his method has, he has uh, recorded all his uh, lectures, mm -hmm. which are available in 48 uh, lectures. It is 48 uh, DVDs, and uh, students are learning from this. <coughs> he makes learning, you know, uh, uh, a pleasant uh, exercise. Mm -hmm. So, would you say, Sheikh, that um, you you've said in and from from what I've heard? that you used to do when when you used to teach uh, when for example you used to teach English in Arabic for for uh, Arab students um, me per personally I, I I think that Arabic could be taught in Arabic to foreign students in the beginning it might be a little complicated and the student might ask himself how I am I even going to be able to speak Arabic if I don't understand the teacher explaining me things in Arabic. Would you think that is, is possible to learn to teach Arabic through Arabic? Or would you say it's more beneficial to teach Arabic through English? And if that's the case, for how long until we switch to completely Arabic? You see, language should be taught <coughs> directly. Uh, direct method, yes. So the for this um, uh, it, it requires that the syllabus should be pre prepared in such a way that you don't need if, uh, another language. So, uh, for example, in my book, Hada Kitabun Hada Kalamun, it doesn't need any language. You can directly teach these words. In the same way, when it comes to Hada. Uh, I have uh, one of my principles that I have followed is تقديم الأصول على الفروع تقديم الأصول على الفروع In books written by the Arabs you find هذا محمد وهذه آمنة and they teach without vowel endings that is wrong. Many uh, Egyptians and all these people, you know, Arabs, they think, you know, you can teach them without verbal endings and then you teach them grammar. It's, it's not, it, it doesn't work. The, the student learns the whole thing. هذا كتاب هذا قلم التنوين. And we say, هذا قلم هذا العربي is هذا قلم هذا كتاب. And then they say, we'll teach them the tanween. It's not going to work. The language should be taught completely. And so, تقديم الأصول على الفروع. That means you teach them, for example, علامة العراب الأصلية. First. So many lessons, you teach only the Alamat al You don't mix, you know, Hada Muhammadun Hadi Aminat. They don't say Aminat, they say Hada Muhammad Hadi Amina. That is wrong. He's not going to learn later on the grammar. That is why Arabs are not very, you know, done very strong and. Uh, Arab. <coughs> so, uh, 
so they because they learn you know with the skin as the skin is is wrong you teach them how the how the so in my system the first lesson there is only masculine feminine comes later on havi aminatu and aminatu i teach them very simply there are two uh, lists first list is the list of masculine nouns masculine proper names other list containing names of feminine proper names uh, for example muhammadun ali yun abbasun another list aminatu khadijatu maryamu and then only one sentence ladies name have only one baba it's not a problem why do you think shaykh that that's so important in the very beginning mm. uh, when the student perhaps might not have even enough vocabulary to even use that particular root why would it be so so important for him to know in the beginning the vowels at the end because it's part of the language in, uh, in arabic a very important part of the language is arab and uh, if you teach them hada muhammad hada hadi amina later on he is going not he is not going to learn the the this grammatical fine points and grammar so it's better to this a student doesn't find difficulty in learning this because from the beginning you teach him this but teaching him later on and he say uh, we taught you at the beginning hada muhammad you should be hada muhammadun he is not going to learn again mm. one time okay oh, yeah so wouldn't you say wouldn't it be effective for example mm. if, if for example cuz I, i personally think from the languages that i have learned that knowing the noun first like for example uh at tawila طاولة تون، and uh, and فاطمة تو، and a student, a beginner student might ask, okay, but why is فاطمة ending just with one تنوين؟ I mean with one ضمة، and then طاولة تون is feminine as well, but is ending with a double تنوين. Why would I? And then they start to to they start thinking about all the rules, and they start and. and me personally i think it distracts them from the from the main thing which is understanding what those nouns mean wouldn't you think sheikh that it would be beneficial maybe in the beginning to to not distract them with like learning different meanings to just let them memorize those different words this is fatima this is tawila this is nafida and then later on explain to them that those usul and you know tanween mamnu min asarf you know feminine is from the different types of mamnu min asarf etc wouldn't that be uh, perhaps beneficial as well you see <coughs> you said tawilatun aminatu there are two different things you say men men have two dhammas ladies have because ladies can't are weak they can't carry two dhammas You see, we give them Arabic is very con- considerate with the, the ladies. It gives only one damma to carry. So you tawilatun is different. It's not a proper name. You say men have two dammas, ladies have one damma. No problem. Anybody can understand. You don't go into the details later on. You know, I've got the third part. The last lesson is about mamnu uh, manasar. Uh, it's very difficult. Later on, you say uh, William. You say William. He is a foreigner. He he can't carry two dhammas. Yes, mm-hmm. we give him only one. Mm-hmm. It's very simple. No. Yeah. If you have a proper name, a list of names, masculine names, list of feminine names, and you say we, the children will un- understand. but you if you say tawilatun and then maryam they are told it's like uh, oranges and uh, 
uh, you know, two different things. Mm. So you say, Bila Alun, I use always uh, proper names which are very really simple uh, for non Arabs to pronounce. Bilal is very simple. Bilalun Aminatu. Then you, you will understand that Bilal is a proper name, man, man's name. Amina is a lady's name. <coughs> so you say lady's name is only one Dhamma. Okay. Yeah. Okay, is that mm. Would you say that, would you say something that I've heard you mention is that Arabs, and which is something that I realized as well, this is why most of the teachers that teach at Andrews Institute, they mostly non-Arab. Because I feel like when you have gone through the process of learning the language, you actually know what the student needs in order for him to learn the language. So would you say that, uh, that to an extent, non-Arabs are more qualified most of the times than Arabs to teach the Arabic language, especially in the very beginning of, uh, of uh, in the very beginning stages, basically. Yes, I completely agree with you. <coughs> because the non-Arabs know the problems <coughs> that uh, that he faced when he learned the language, and he will avoid that. So, <coughs> non-Arabs are better suited to teach Arabic than the Arabs, because the Arabs, first of all, most of them, even if they are very, very careful, they <coughs> they can't avoid using their dialect. It's very uh, at least in, in pronunciation. Even if the syntax is correct, he won't pronounce the vowel and Umm uh, Kulthum, uh, the famous uh, singer. You know, yeah. So. She once uh, sang Iqbal's uh, uh, poetry in uh, classical Arabic. <coughs> then when uh, letters like Tha and Dal, she said, I, 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 I can't do this. Uh, this is Bedouin language, I, I can't use it. She couldn't pronounce it? No, no, no. Oh, she didn't want to? She didn't want to. She didn't want to be seen as a Bedouin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, wow. And, and Sheikh, would you... Um, as well, I wanted to ask you, in terms of when teaching the Arabic language, there are certain terms, like for example, they actually carry a meaning and there's a very specific reason why they were mentioned why they were named after their names or al mamnu min as sarf etc etc i personally think that it's very hard many times to to translate that into english this is why i i don't agree with teachers giving names to these particular terms and this is why i don't like either teaching Arab or Arabic grammar in English, uh, not because only it's very hard, but as well it makes it very confusing for the student because the translation, the translated name might not carry a, a meaning. Mm -hmm. So would you say when it comes to teaching Arabic grammar, perhaps other things like Hada Kitab, when you can tell the student this is a book, that's fine, would you say that when it comes to grammar, it's very hard to teach it in, in English. And should it be teaching in English? No, very small things and all basic things can be taught in Arabic. <coughs> and like the... Basic things can be taught in Arabic or in English? No, 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 in, in Arabic. Uh, if there is uh, any problem later on, you can use the language only to <coughs> make him understand that particular mm. thing. Point out. Yeah, but it's better to teach in Arabic because uh, each language has got its own system, mm. which is different from other the system of other languages. So it's better to teach grammar in Arabic. Uh, 
But you know, grammar, <coughs> most of the grammar things can be taught, can be simplified. Mm. You, know, I mean, you need not teach, you know, exactly as, as it is uh, taught uh, in grammar books. You can simplify. Mm. Yes. <coughs> so, I've got uh, one of the things here is fragmentation of the rule. No, 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 here, here. I'll give you later on. Uh, fragmentation. For example, Mamnum uh, Arsaf, there's a lot of details. You fragment. You teach, first of all, the, the, the first thing that a student needs is a lady's name. You follow me? You say lady's name is only one dhamma. There's no problem. No, everybody can understand. If there's no other English, you, you can have a list of male, masculine names, and another list of feminine names. So it's Bialun, Basun, Amina, Tu. With signs. Yes, with signs. And the names that you select should be named, you know, well known to the students. Like Amina, Khadija, Maryam. You, you don't bring in letter names which are not known to them. Uh, so fragmentation. So you teach. Secondly, you come Edward William. You say William. You will say uh, Muhammadun, Adilun, Arabs. William. Not non Arab. No more. So uh, these things can be taught very simple in a simple language. Doesn't need you know you go into the details of these things. The problem is I uh, teach in, uh, I see in the uh, internet from from the beginning. Hada kitabun he says muktada and uh, that's nonsense. You, you teach them what it. If you say hada kitabun, the student will understand and. See, in the language, the most important thing is repetition. And uh, the language is a habit. Language is a habit, it's not a skill. Skill like uh, you know, driving. It's, a, it's not a skill, it's a uh, habit. <coughs> so the more you, you know, when I was teaching Hada Kitabun Hada Karuna, I teach it and later on the student, one student gets up and he does as I did, another student. So the moment they go out of the class one after one hour, they are able to speak this. Through practice. Yeah, practice. Yeah. I have got a rule. Qalilum minat taqid, 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 ruling, making rules. قَلِيلٌ مِّنَ التَّقَعِيدِ وَكَثِيرٌ مِّنَ التَّمْرِينَ So what would you say, Sheikh, in terms of, there is a lot of students, foreign students, Western students, who say, because they, they want to understand the Qur'an and the Sunnah, which is the reason why they learn the Arabic language. So they say, for example, I don't need to practice speaking, because I just want to understand the Qur'an and the Sunnah. I don't want to speak. How would you... Would you say that's a correct understanding and approach? Or is speaking as well important when it comes to learning a language, even if your main purpose is to understand the Quran and the Sunnah? <coughs> there are two things. <coughs> First thing is, <coughs> there's what is called learning language for, for a special purpose. So there are students, Indian students, and foreign students go to London. They learn, <coughs> he is a scientist, he learns only the language that concerns science. Another, astronomy, he learns only the language concerned with the subject. So, the special purpose. So, if a man wants to learn Arabic for, the, for, for understanding Arabic, he, he can, we can uh, uh, design a course wherein only Arabic, Quranic words can be used. And grammar, grammar also. For example, Asma uh, al-Khamsa. 
الهانو وكذا اتس نوت يوزد ان القران ان اباها وابا اباها اتس نوت يوزد ان القران سو ويل تيتش هيم اونلي ذا رولز اند ذا ووردز ذات ار يوزد ان القران ذن سكند كويستشن سبيكينج از ا باي برودكت If you teach them properly, uh, only Quranic Arabic, he's able, he, he can be able to speak. You follow me? If you ask him questions, so he'll be able to understand speaking. It's a byproduct. It's, it's almost automatic. Yes, yes, time. yes. If you teach him properly, by a direct method, Quranic Arabic, he will learn Quranic Arabic plus speak. Mm. Yeah, for sure. Because I think a lot of a lot of students, they it's almost like an excuse. I don't want to. They almost see it as a waste of time. I don't want to to uh, you know to to spend time speaking or practicing my fluency when speaking. And I think it's just an excuse because they find it difficult. But me personally, I think that even. Like for example, the word language, the word lugha, the word lisan, the word lengua in Spanish, uh, the tongue, the Arabic tongue. I think it's all related to the to the to the tongue, like to the the speaking. No, and even uh, when it comes to the Arab, uh, you know, one of the the references al wada hal hal istamaluhu al Arab. Did they even use it? Of course, they didn't write much. So. Uh, So I think, in my opinion, is is definitely important to speak as well. Yes, definitely. In the language of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and the language of the Sahabas, who spoke this language. <coughs> so speaking Arabic is Sunnah. The Prophet spoke it. So it should be looked at in, from this point of view that. The, our forefathers, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and the Sahabas, their language is Arabic. They spoke Arabic, so it is it's a learning uh, to speak is a Sunnah. Mm. So, Sheikh, when when it comes to when you authored all all of your books, was it all based on experience and what you've gone through, or was it? Uh, based on someone else, one of your teachers, one of other books, perhaps. No, no. I <coughs> my book is based on what uh, what I you know uh, faced while learning Arabic. So uh, the problems that I face, I try to avoid them in my, in my book. Uh, <coughs> So it's all. I did not uh, use anything from, uh, you know, other books. It was b- purely based on my own experience. Mm, yes. Um, in terms of, uh, of uh, so many people, they they actually think they they lose motivation because they look at all of these you know perhaps talab tulab al ilm and all of these students of knowledge and they all look like they speak so well arabic now that they think there was a an influence perhaps their parents spoke arabic or perhaps they is because they were in an arab country or something like that so i wanted to ask you personally did your parents speak arabic or was any type of influence of you growing up perhaps even i don't know watching Cartoons, even if at that time I don't think there was TV uh, that made you and helped you to to learn Arabic faster, or was it just purely based on your interactions with uh, with Arabs and travels? No, <coughs> no, my parents did not speak Arabic, and there was no nobody in uh, our locality who spoke Arabic. Even the Arabic scholars, <coughs> as I told you, the Madrasa. Those who study in madrasas, they don't speak Arabic. The system they follow doesn't help them to uh, speak Arabic. 
So my, <coughs> in the beginning when I learned the language from the books, uh, I, I did not speak Arabic, but later on when I interacted with Arabs who came from Arab countries and so that is how I, I learned in uh, the uh, radio <coughs> programs also helped me and my personal you know efforts <coughs> to uh, learn to speak my uh, my uh, environment did not help me at all mm. and w would you say sheikh that when you went to egypt for example uh did you benefit from the people outside in the streets speaking speaking Arabic, or was their dialect useless and you only benefited from your classmates and, as you said, your personal efforts? You know, when you are in a country, you are, <coughs> you know, forced to learn the language of that people. You have to interact with the people, you have to. So, <clears throat> unfortunately, I also had to learn. But I, I had in my mind that I should uh, preserve my correct Arabic. Even if I learn the dialect, I should preserve the correct Arabic, which I have learned. So, I was not completely, you know, uh, I did not completely forget the uh, correct Arabic and uh, was uh, over, overwhelmed by the dialect. Mm. And uh, after I came back from Egypt, mm. I was able to completely shake off the dialectal mm. <laughs> things that I had learned. Okay, I'm saying that because a lot of students, they think, Oh, I'm, I'm, if I want to learn Arabic, I have to be in an Arab country. I have to be in Egypt. I have to be. And they think they're going to benefit from the people in the street speaking Arab, the Arabic dialect. But I told them that it's not the country or it's not the people in the street that's going to help you. Rather, is your teacher and your classmates who speak Fusha. Because there is no country in the world that speaks Fusha, really. So this is why I told them you should even... Even in Canada or America or, or France, you can learn the Arabic language at the same level than someone who goes to, to Egypt. Because they, if you can benefit the same way you know, with your teacher online by you being in your Western country than the teacher that, or the student that goes to, to Egypt and learns there. Because he doesn't benefit from the surroundings of, uh, of people speaking Amiya and, and dialects. Would you say that that's a, a correct approach? Yes. <coughs> my, my view is that the best place to, write, to learn a language, to learn Arabic, is a non-Arab country. Mm. You think it's better? It's better. That is the best place to learn Arabic, is a non-Arab country. Mm. The moment you go to an Arab country, you, you, you because as it, you just now mentioned, Arabic is not a spoken language in, in any country. Nobody speaks Arabic. They speak the dialect. But uh, classical Arabic, you can read the newspapers and all. But nobody speaks classical Arabic except in uh, <coughs> uh, what should be I call except in the uh, news bulletin. News bulletin. Mm, yeah, bulletin. Oh, in the newspapers? News bulletin, newspapers also, mm -hmm. and the TV program, news bulletin. Okay. There is the only place where Arabic, classical Arabic is used. No, no, no. Uh, even in conversation and dialogues, they speak, uh, they don't speak classical Arabic. Mm -hmm. But news bulletin, they have to. Mm -hmm. You follow me? In, even news bulletins, the numbers are set in. Uh, no, 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 not pronounced in the correct Arabic way. Mm, yeah. So, uh, Arab countries uh, don't help you to learn the language. Yeah. But you can, uh, in your room, in your class, in your school, 
you can create a, a classical Arabic atmosphere. You know, people speaking Arabic with uh, uh, recordings and uses. You can create that. That's how we did here in Islamic University. The uh, Arabic program. We used to have uh, programs, uh, recorded programs and. Uh, and notices in classical Arabic, yes. And uh, first of all, we had the Egyptians, but later on, you know, we, we found that they spoke only their dialect, mm -hmm. teaching students, you know, that that means they, when they see them, uh, sometimes, you know, the student says something which is not Arabic, classical Arabic. I told him it is wrong. He says, how can it be wrong? The teacher says this. So, <laughs> so a lot of students in the West, they actually listen to a fatwa that Sheikh Ibn Thaymin, uh, rahimahullah, he was asked what books to start with when learning the Arabic language. And he said, uh, Al-Ajrumiya. And a lot of Western students, they hear this and they go straight to Al-Ajrumiya. Um, so, of course, yani, you need to understand who the Sheikh is talking to. And, and there was mostly an Arab uh, audience. Uh, would you say that that's correct or they actually have to start through books like al Jurumiya? When I was teaching at the Islamic University, <coughs> Americans <coughs> came, uh, students. <coughs> and uh, when the first, there was a student who sat in the class for a for, a, for one day and uh, at the end of the day he came to me he said uh, we I have come here to to learn mutun mm. yeah this is nonsense you, you what you're teaching is not mutun like mutun like aqida mutun or no no no, no. Mutun. okay yeah ajrumi uh, okay <laughs> yes mm. we want to learn mutun uh, <clears throat> this is nonsense the Sheikh probably was speaking to the Arabs. The Arabs, you know, they have to learn as their system here to uh, to get by heart in all certain grammar uh, books, mutun, like Ajrumiya and all that. Ajrumiya, all the 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 gist of Ajrumiya is in in my book. What is It's all there. Mm. So learning Ajrumiya uh, or a student, as I told you before, nobody learns a language with the help of a grammar book. Yeah. What we learn is through uh, applied grammar. Yes. So uh, the uh, Europeans and uh, Americans and all, they have got a wrong notion uh, of learning uh, Mutun. They have to learn the language first, and then they learn the mutun if they want. Yeah. You can't go on, you know, kalam banam, lafzum, kastakim, you know, malik. If you live, what, 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 what does he understand from this? And how will you learn, learn the language? Yeah. Mm. So, in how my approach when it comes to, to teaching the Arabic language is I, I focus massively on memorization of vocabulary in the beginning. Mm -hmm. I tell the students, as you said earlier, um, that is it's very important to learn through, that the Arabic language is learned through repetition and habit. Mm -hmm. So I told them that minimum you have to repeat at least 250 times until it's memorized. Mm -hmm. I make them repeat ghurfatun ghurafun ghurfatun ghurafun 250 times mm -hmm. until you memorize that. I think that those, those students, for example, the Arab students, the reason why Sheikh Ibn Thimin would say to start learning al-mutun is because they already know all of these words. Ghurfa, ghuraf. So would you say that that is, uh, that is a correct approach? Memorize a lot of vocabulary in the beginning with applied grammar, as you said, like very simple things of grammar to help you build you know, simple sentences, 
and then later on go into the details of actual grammar and all the different uh, fragments, as you said, from Al-Mamnum and As-Sarf and the different chapters of, of grammar. See, the smallest unit of a language is a sentence, not words. So the word should be learned in a sentence. So just words, the, the word ha can have different meanings. But if, when it comes, when it gets into the sentence, the meaning is fixed. Okay. Yeah. Based on the context. Context, yes. The word, the word yes. So uh, always, and I always say, like as I said, when a, a student learns a, a noun, he must learn the plural. But there are a lot of plurals, but he should be taught only the plural that is being used. Mm. For example, in my book I have got Maridun uh, Marwa. Right. One of the theses there, he, he said Mirad, Miradun. Mm. Uh, so I said it's wrong. Miradun means al-uyunul mirad, you know, uh, eyes which are uh, sort of sleepy and all that kind of thing. Uh, so that is a <coughs> technical or uh, lit literary word. The word which is used in the Quran also marda. So we teach them the, the most uh, used uh, plural, so kitabun kutubun, rasulun rusulun. And with the verb, he must learn the uh, bab, mazi, uh, mudare, and mazdar. Because uh, most of the Arab is a nazala yanzulu. Because it's uh, Amiya, they speak yanzulu. Uh, they don't know. In, in their uh, textbooks also, Arabic textbooks, they don't teach uh, uh, abwab. So we want to teach, when we, when we teach, we must teach with the Maadi uh, Mudara. We say, Kataba Yaktubu. Kataba Yaktubu, Kitaba. Dakhalayat Kulu, Dukhul. Dukhulan, Yaw Dukhulun. Jalasa Yajlisu. So we don't teach him only the past, past, present, and the Mazdar. Uh, with a noun, we must learn the plural. Mm. Must most used plural, only one. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Ah, also, uh, with regard to nouns, <coughs> it's better to say, Hadihi Narun, Hadihi Yadun, Hadha Rasun, with Hadha and Hadi, because he doesn't know the gender, but we, uh, it'll be difficult for him. So from the beginning, when he learns a noun, he learns with hadha or hadi. To differentiate. Yes, differentiate. So it becomes part of the system when he says hadi hinarun, hadi ainun, hadi kitabun, hadi daftarun, hadi baytun, hadi darun. You know what I mean? Come on. I went to a school in India. They were teaching my book. So the lady teacher, she said, Hadha Baitun. I also taught, taught them Hadha Darun. I said, wrong. Dar is feminine. If you know the things, you know, you teach otherwise. Yeah. So, Chef, what makes, what makes the, the Medina books, what would you say makes them different to other books like all the books that have been authored that many people use. I think the most commonly used are Arabi Ibn Adai, Kitab al-Asasi, perhaps Umm al-Qura program, and um, Malik Ibn Saud as well, the program, the Arabic program. So those, I would say, with the Medina books, I, I would say those are the most common uh, programs that Western students go through. What would you, what would you say that makes the Medina books different to to those others? That is, I have followed in Medina al Arabia by Nayadaika, some book, I, I forget. The first sentence is, and I'm in Pakistan. Mm. This is wrong. 
it violates my rule taqdeem al usul al qur'an they teach them with sukoon taskeen as anam in pakistan but if they do it with proper ending adam in pakistan you teach the the rule secondary rule before teaching the primary rule he should be ana min al yamani ana min al iraqi the second lesson you can say in pakistan if you many learns the other thing but i uh, all first sentence i have seen in the book and i'm in pakistan and they don't uh, use the tahrik they say and i'm in pakistan that is also as i told is, is wrong uh, one of my rules i have mentioned here is taliq uh, you know is to qaida uh, al-waqf we don't use qaida al-waqf in the quran okay but in teaching arabic qaida al-waqf so hada kitab the arabs all of them they said hada kitab on is wrong this is hada kitab so would you say the the in the times of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the times of the arab mm. would they use the whole tanwin no no of course the rules of waqf there Yeah. No, no, yeah. but we have to suspend the rule when teaching the language mm. because if you said hada kitab hada muhammad hada hadi amina you are you don't teach her teach him the basic thing that amina to is amina as but if you have a separate subject ah if you say hadi amina to ya akhi something like that eh? doesn't come at the end so that will be okay mm. yes <coughs> but the uh, rules g- grammar rules we don't teach them grammar rules separately mm. it should be part of the teaching mm. it becomes part of the language uh, system mm. so you do not teach her see the, i had a student i was i was his, his student uh was doing phd in arabic mm-hmm. and i was his uh, guide mm-hmm. he said he wrote masajidan in his mm-hmm. i said masajidan you are <coughs> going to PhD. pass out phd and you are be doctor the his question was more problematic than his writing he said why is masajid the mamnun mm-hmm. sir <laughs> Uh, so uh, that is because of the system mm-hmm. because of the system <coughs> because they don't teach, teach that in the beginning yes mm-hmm. it should be a language as a whole mm-hmm. be taught as a whole Where do you where do you listen? Where do you hear? Because to me it was an honor. I I did put a lot of effort in putting together Andalus Institute. I spent a whole year by myself in my grandmother's uh, apartment trying to figure out trying to figure out just as you said through my experiences and what I faced on how to put a program online to uh, to let you know students just like me to benefit and learn the Arabic language. So. 
where was the, the first time you've heard about, about Andres Institute and what I was putting forth? Uh, what I was putting forth, uh, where was it and how did it happen? Recently, uh, by chance, you know, I happened to watch your, uh, one of your uh, programs. Mm -hmm. And there I saw you speaking and I think with a student who was from uh, Somalia. From Guinea, maybe. Oh. You, sp you studied at the Islamic University? No, I didn't say in the last So, <clears throat> that's how I first, uh, you said the learning, learning Arabic from zero to... Uh, fluent. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. It was, uh, I forgot, you, first of all, you wrote to me last year. Mm. But I forgot your name. Uh, but recently I saw one of your programs and... Uh, no. So I wanted to show you, Sheikh, the, mm. the program mm -hmm. and explain to you what, you know, how, you know, our approach basically. Mm. And you perhaps can comment and say if you think that mm. something could be different or better or... So first of all, the student, when he joins the program, when he joins the program, he has access to this portal. Mm -hmm. So first of all, there is something we call the guide to discipline. Because something that I have seen with a lot of students is that they don't know how to, how to be students. Not even students of the Arabic language, but how to be students. How, to, mm -hmm. how much to sleep, how much to eat, how much to speak, mm -hmm. who to be with, companies. Uh, you know, all the different all the different efforts and sacrifices you need to give in order for you to be a successful and efficient student. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we show them how to, mm -hmm. how to discipline themselves. Mm -hmm. Then on module number one, we teach them how to, how to read and write. Mm -hmm. And all the, all the videos and all the lessons are, are you know, based in this manner, for example. So here, So here we have the Bawalai, the land is Bawalaization. So here we have Al Haraka, different So I teach them about EBT, the same, you know, very common way on how to, mm -hmm. how to teach how to learn, mm -hmm. uh, how to read. Mm -hmm. This is the same way that I've used myself. And again, like all of the, this program is based on my experience, my own experience. Then... I'll show you. Uh, my system is, in with regard to letters, <coughs> letters, Arabic letters, with regard to the letters of the student, mm -hmm. are of three categories. They fall into three categories. Mm -hmm. One is completely <coughs> identical. Mm -hmm. Arabic words identical with the with his language, mm -hmm. letters of his language. Secondly, similar but not identical. Mm -hmm. Thirdly, completely different. Mm -hmm. So, in this system, I use the uh, first of all they are identical. The student learns very sim very easily because they are identical with this language. Mm. Secondly, similar. And at the end, I put the totally different. Okay. Uh, this is one principle. Second principle is letters without vowels are dead letters. Mm. You teach them from the beginning, ma, me, mu. Mm. You follow me? Right. You don't say meme and then. Yes. So, <clears throat> from the beginning. And then third, third principle, the examples I give after two real living words. Mm. When you teach the Arab system, 
اسے اسدن دیٹ ایچ حمزہ ون تھرڈ دیٹ یو وانٹ ٹو ٹیچ ٹو تھرڈ آر نان نون ٹو دی اسٹوڈنٹ حمزہ ہی از ٹیچنگ حمزہ بٹ ہی یوز دی ورڈ اسد سین ہی ڈزنٹ نو دال ہی ڈزنٹ نو بٹ ہیئر دی ورڈ وچ ہیز آلریڈی لرنٹ آئی ٹیچ ہم لا بٹ ہی ہیز لرن میم ان دی پریویس لیسنس یس سو دیز آر دی تھری پرنسپلس giving them the, the threefold division okay. secondly uh, secondly what I said uh, with vowels mm. oh, third the example should be from the words already learnt from the letters, letters that have, he has already learnt mm. rules and letters that he has already learnt okay. uh, There is a similar book which is called At-Tibiyan mm-hmm. and it is available in uh, uh, Amazon. Do you have author? Yes. Yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. At-Tibiyan. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that, that's the first, the first module. Mm-hmm. Then the second module which is the most important one mm-hmm. is uh, here is where I focus a lot on vocabulary. Mm-hmm. The whole Oh, the whole of this module, on average, the student learns 7,000 to 10,000 mm-hmm. vocabulary words. Oh, sure. So, um, so, I focus a lot on, on vocabulary, however, mm. every single lesson, there are 64 lessons. Mm. And every single lesson has what I call an essential lesson. Mm-hmm. So, for example, this essential lesson is al-Dhamair al-Muqtasila. And then, for example, if I go to lesson 35, He has, he has another, this is locked as well. If the student didn't complete a lesson, it doesn't allow him to go to the next one. Mm-hmm. But for example, in lesson 33, you have a test, to, for example. Yes, a test as well. Mm-hmm. Then he has Uruf al for example, in lesson 33. Mm-hmm. So little by little, as you said, the whole Medina books is pretty much all the content of Al-Ajrumiya. Mm-hmm. So module number two as well, you have content to all the content of Al-Ajrumiya, which is, you know, very simple mm-hmm. grammar things. Then apart from these on module number two, every five lessons, mm-hmm. we test them on the vocabulary. We ask them, what does Tawila mean? What does Nafila mean? What does Masjid mean? Mm-hmm. What is the the plural of masjid. Mm. What is the, and we ask them as well, masjid, masjidun, and then we ask them, the plural, and he says masajidun many times. Mm. They say masajidun. We tell them, masajidun, you sure? Mm. And then they tell, oh, no, masajidun. Mm. So we do focus as well on the mm. sub, etc. Mm. Then after lesson six, mm. he is able to attend what we call the weekly conversational sessions. Weekly conversational sessions are Zoom, Zoom meeting mm. calls. Mm with myself or with other with other instructors mm. and here we basically focus on only conversation with the vocabulary they have learned in the week it's four hours in the weekend mm. so we tell them for example okay um yeah osama um speak about this image what do you see in the image speak in arabic mm. and they make a lot of mistakes throughout the process then after they speak for five minutes mm. we tell them okay you've said هذا صورة. Mm. You don't say هذا صورة. Remember, we spoke in this lesson. You say هذه صورة. And they say, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, that's true. Mm. And then little by little, mm. we correct all of their little mistakes to try and and make them make less and less mistakes in mm. their in their speaking. Mm. So this is the weekly conversational sessions. The student only can access this after lesson six, so he can have a little bit of vocabulary in order for him to practice. Mm. Then after every lesson as well, we have a, an assessment, lesson assessment, which is from a, is from a exercise book that I have, uh, we've put together mm. the program, which is this, this books right here, is Daftar al which is just 
questions based on those lessons. Mm -hmm. Now, in in the lesson, they actually the the book the book we we use for vocabulary mm -hmm. is a lot of We don't use the actual exercises or tamarin or anything. Just the vocabulary mm -hmm. in order for us to give them. Okay, aina means where to salli, 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 salli is salah. Al fajr is it means these. Limada means these, and we give them more and more and more vocabulary mm -hmm. until they are able to have a good rasid lughawi and a good amount of vocabulary. Um, so then, then um, every five lessons we test them, yani shafa orally, and every lesson kitabiyan. So they they get two different types of, of test. As well, in every lesson, there is an oral assessment, chef mm -hmm. and they respond to certain questions with, with an audio, and that audio is sent to to my teacher, who actually taught me Arabic. Mm -hmm. He's a PhD holder in, uh, in Dalal Ulum in Egypt, as well, Egyptian teacher, mm -hmm. and he he listens to the student say, you know, respond to those to those questions. And then he records himself listening to the audio mm -hmm. and send him back the the tasihat of his pronunciation, mm -hmm. tamarin or whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. Or if he says, for example, suratun hadi, then he might he might tell, okay, the correct organization sequence. Yeah, sequence is hadi surah mm -hmm. by default, etc. So then this module number two, very simple, uh, you know, on average. The student in the middle of this module he is able already to converse and ready to speak and and he's able to um, to have a good uh, amount of vocabulary. Mm -hmm. Then the essential lessons is for Nakira and Marifa on mm -hmm. lesson 17. Mm -hmm. So little by little we show them and all the lessons as well are all, all in Arabic. After lesson six, I teach only in Arabic, and I only use words that they already know. Mm -hmm. So I show myself here, and then everything mm -hmm. appears. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, specific. So here, if there is something is hard to, I know the student is hard to explain to, I might say in English. Because as you say, to point out specific yeah. things. So here they already know ism, dalla yadunu, ala, shay, ghayr, all of these words they already know. Ma'ayyan, I know, they don't know. So I might say it in English so they understand. Vocabulary lessons. Oh, 
So here I know that they know, they don't know Inaya, but they know Ihtimam, they know Al-Ri'aya uh, Tayyib. Um, so here is the text of Al-Arabi in Aydik, and the, the words that are Mumayyizah, all of these words, I know they don't know. So we, we read everything, and when we reach a word, Mm -hmm. I explain to them what's botni. I might do like this, have a button. And then I explain them the whole lesson. Mm -hmm. The mother prepared the food. Al Ijaba Aksu Sual. Ana as aluka kefa haluka. Anta tujibu. Al Ijaba. Ana bi khair. Hadi ijaba. Kefa haluka. Sual. Ana bi khair. إجابة فبهذه بهذه الإشارات الطالب يفهم حتى وإن لم يعرف معنى الإجابة يعرف لو يعرف السؤال أقول هو يعرف السؤال ويعرف معنى عكس فبذلك يفهم and then at the end I explain them one by one every single word what it means يا تعالى 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 متعالى متعالى يهيئ هيئ ته تهيئة مهيئ مهيئ هيئت الأم الطعام للضيوف وأعدت الأم الطعام للضيوف يعني تو and I give them a small synonyms حتى so they have more رصيد لغوي prepare هيئ أعد to prepare the food for example Allah prepared to them for them this thing. Tayyib, let me find you an ayah. Allah says in the Quran, Surah Al Baqarah, فَإِن لَمْ تَفْعَلُوا وَلَنْ تَفْعَلُوا فَاتَّقُوا النَّارَ الَّتِي وَقُودُهَا النَّاسُ وَالْحِجَارَةِ وَعِدَّتْ that it was prepared so here a lot of students they perhaps don't know through an ayah mm. okay and they are able to make a connection in the meaning mm. so here's the verbs the verbs that I explained to them and then um, in the beginning I I give them uh, nouns Hasbu mm Shay -hmm. I and I explain them Mayak Fihi Kamilun Kamalatun wa Kamiluna Musrifun Musrifuna Wiaun Awa Ayatun Aw Awain Yani Ina wa Awanin And like that I give them my main focus in this module is for them to learn a lot a lot a lot a lot of vocabulary mm. and then lastly they they learn uh, we actually l learn al ajromia in module number three mm. in module number three we learn uh, al ajromia al is al ajromia but i have prepared it فإذا قلت قد قامت قد قامت الصلاة، يعني أن الصلاة قد اقتربت، قد اقتربت بقرب قريب جدا. وهنا المعاني المختلفة لقد التحقيق.